Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome back, it's Jordan here. Yeah, today has been a pretty good day because uh, the final coat of drywall mud has been applied. Look at that. Look at all that mud. It's so much mud. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so tomorrow is going to be a pretty cool day because they're going to sand it. Woo! <laughs> pretty exciting stuff. But yeah, once that's all sanded, then guess what? Then we can start painting, which is pretty exciting. <laughs> also, uh, tomorrow, so I'm also going to include this in the video, I, I'm pretty sure the electricians are going to come by and they're going to finish their work, which is going to be very exciting as well, because I'll finally not have to wear a coat in here. Yes, we have a furnace, but that's not heating up this whole place, and I refuse to crank it because it just wouldn't be able to handle the size of this place. So the heater's going to be fired up tomorrow, and I am fired up on that because then it's going to be warm. And you know what? I think the weekend's coming up here. I'm pretty sure it is. Last time I checked my calendar, we were approaching the weekend. And uh, what's exciting about that is I think once the heater's fired up, I'm going to bring a Lindman table in here, maybe a couple of them, whatever it may be. And I'm actually going to do some live streaming in here where it's warm and actually going to build some Lego in here. It's a little bit hard to build Lego in what I have it at now, 16 degrees, because your phalanges get real cold. Uh, there's a couple other things that have to happen though. And I actually nailed it down today. So this pipe will be moving. I figured that out. And that's gonna be happening, not tomorrow unfortunately, the next day. I want it to happen right now because it's holding up production. It's holding up production in a big way. Because before we can paint, we've gotta build the last pony wall. The last pony wall is gonna go right there. And it's, got a, it's gonna have only one seam of drywall, so it's just gotta be taped and mudded in one seam, and then we can paint. There's no sense in busting out the paint rollers and the paint brushes and painting everything when you're just gonna have to do it again once the next pony wall is built. So that it's, it's sort of holding things up. But once that pipe is out of there, then we're, uh, we're good to go. We're good to go on that front. So today in this video, I just wanna provide you with a, a solid construction update of everything here in the LEGO studio and provide you with some timelines as well. And I finally have like a potential completion date, but that's all that we got done today. Just the, uh, the mud, the final mud. We sanded the second coat and the third coat has been applied, but as you can see, it's pretty yellow, so it still has to dry. You can't sand that. And once that's sanded, then we're ready to go, but we can't do that until tomorrow. So that's when I'll see you next. I forgot my hat at home this morning, and I need to get a haircut. Let's just make it as wild as it can go. <laughs> but we're back here, and the electrician is here. He just ran to the... Uh, wholesale to grab some cable because he needs the right cable to wire up the heater. So he's going to be taking care of that today. I'm really happy about that. And you know what? I forgot to feature uh, this yesterday. Paul was here and he started patching these walls. And I want to show you something pretty cool. It's a trick that he taught me that I haven't tried to do yet, but it's a pretty cool trick. This wall right here, it had a whole bunch of spots that needed to be patched. So Paul worked on patching those spots. For example, this, you just put some drywall mud or some spackle light over it, just like you classically would. This one, you put a lot more of it and you do multiple coats because it's a big circular hole. But sometimes these holes in the walls, they become huge because an angry teenager punched it or whatever it may be, or somebody rammed their elbow through it, or I don't know, for some reason you get a big hole in the wall. Like a big square one, like this, for example. Sometimes these things are so big that you can't patch them with just drywall mud. So classically, how I would do that is I would cut a piece of wood, I would put the piece of wood in the hole, and then I would screw the piece of wood into the drywall that's intact. I would cut the square of drywall, put the square of drywall in, and then screw that and then tape and mud it. But check out what Paul did. This is so cool. So he actually took a piece of drywall and then it has like the paper on the front. So he actually removed the actual drywall stuff from a section of it. And then he kept it in the square. And then he put like a bunch of mud on the paper. And then he just boop, put that in there. And then he ran his uh, scraper over it, took out all the excess drywall mud. And look at that. It's what you call a California patch. There's a new way of patching giant holes in the wall. So you can see this is the square where the drywall actually is. And then this is just the paper. 
That is brilliant. You know what I mean, though, how I would normally do it? Like, when you put the wood in, you screw in, then you have something to screw your little square that you cut out to fit in there, and then you draw it, tape and mud around it. Yeah, this is just, like, way more efficient, I think. Is this a Lego channel, or is this a renovation channel? <laughs> We're going to get back to the Lego, like, soon. I just need a place to put my Lego in order to talk about Lego and build Lego. And I'm working on it. I'm working on it as quickly as possible. Believe me, I want this renovation to be done as quickly as possible so that I can start constructing the Lego City, start working on the layout, start moving in the shelves, start moving in the studio stuff. Believe me, I am chomping at the bit here. I thought construction was going to get done here in this month. It's March of 2024, but it looks like it's going to be leaking in to the month of April, which is unfortunate, but it is what it is. I know eventually it's going to get done. I'm having a lot of fun here dealing with this stuff every day, learning as I go as well. So, you know what, it's, it's a good change of pace for me. It's, it's been a great time, and I think it's sweet. Well, yeah, California patch is pretty sweet as well, isn't it? Pretty neat trick. Before we continue with this video, I just wanted to let you know about a stream that I'll be hosting on Whatnot. It takes place on Saturday, March 30th, starting at 12 o'clock Mountain Time. And during that stream, I'm going to be auctioning off hundreds of these epic minifigures and they're all going to be one dollar starts and they're going to be sudden death auction style holy cow check it out we got star wars marvel superheroes knights a hulk big fig cmfs and much more in addition to that i'm also going to be giving away a brand new sealed inbox back to the future DeLorean. If you're not on Whatnot, you can join using my affiliate link, which is in the pinned comment and description below. And when you join using that link, you're going to get a $10 credit, which can be redeemed on your first purchase. I hope to see you there. The heater officially ran, and then I turned it off. Uh-oh, what happened? Well, I'm having to make a, a change because it ran for a good while, and I was like, man, it's toasty in here. It's toasty in here. Why is it still running? And that's because the thermostat was on this wall over here. And it's not quite as warm over here because we're a little bit further away from the heater. And also because we're by the back door and we're on an outside wall. For example, this wall is really cold. The thermostat was right here. Therefore, it wasn't like switching off. So these walls here are much warmer. Like, the difference between that wall and this wall, it's actually pretty wild. So what I'm gonna have them do is actually put the thermostat coming off the box right there. So the electrical for the heater goes that way and feeds into the heater and powers it up. But now we're actually gonna move the thermostat below this box right here. So now it's actually going to be a little bit closer to the heater, just out of the range of it. And it's also going to be on an inside wall. Like I'm in here in a t-shirt and like I'm warm, the heater's not even on, but I don't want it running because it's on a cold wall. So I think it makes more sense to have the thermostat on a warm wall. So even though he already set it up over there, I'm having him move it and he's got to go back to the wholesale to uh, get a box for that. So yeah. <laughs> a little bit of learning there involved with the uh, thermostat for the heater. But I definitely am going to feel a little bit better with it on that wall there. Also, check it out. He installed the light switches right here. So these now control the lights and the lights up there as well. So that makes me feel pretty happy because now I no longer have to go in that room to turn the lights on. And also, right below that, there's a new plug, so that's sweet. Now these are off, you can see like this one's down right now. It's just because it's a two-way switch and the other switch is over there. So all I have to do is just flick that one then it all makes sense. But this uh, is a really neat and tidy job, check it out. That's the existing switches. So he ran the VX cable up and over and down. And then this feeds the switch right there. And then also a power outlet right there. And I officially have a power outlet for the hot water tank as well. So now I've got some hot water. 
Got my second cup of coffee brewing for the day. That's excellent. The heater is fired up. It's just radiating up there. Also, the thermostat has been fixed up. So the thermostat is right there. The heater right there. So it's just like a foot over. So it's out of the direct rays of the radiant heater. And I think it's just going to do a better job of not <laughs> having this thing on all the time. But when I'm over here, like it's still t-shirt time, like 100%. It's t-shirt time in the studio. Thank goodness. I have been waiting for this day for quite some time. And let me tell you, like I feel the heat of it back here. And when we uh, run up top here, I was doing some tests when it was on earlier. It was still pretty warm up here too. Like I feel it, like it's really warm right here on the stairs. Whew. And then up here, oh yeah, it's, it's still warm. So that's good. Excellent. Also, there's like that extra vent coming off the furnace. And that's currently blasting through the door hole down there. So it's actually right down here. It's right beside that pipe. You see it there? So this one feeds into the bathroom underneath this floor here. But I'm just like thinking about where should that other one go? Because right now it's blasting out the door as a temporary heat solution. And the idea was to put that in the wall and put like a damper on it and have it blast out that way. So there's more heat going out that way. And then also when I get the AC installed, I have an AC vent somewhere. But now I'm thinking because it's AC, maybe we should put it in the pony wall here and then there'll be AC coming out this way. But then there's also gonna be more heat coming out that way. And let me tell you, it's, it's hot right here. We're right by a heater. Like that thing's not very far away at all. It's very hot right there and very hot directly underneath the heater as well. It's just radiating off that thing like crazy. So I really need to think about where to put that last heat vent. Of course, the furnace, like I've mentioned in previous videos, the furnace is running underneath the floor and it's heating the front offices and the front shelving rooms. But then there's also that one that I need to think about. That's that bad boy right there. What are we gonna do with that? Should that come out here into one of these walls or should it go up there to the pony wall? Where should it go? Classically, that would be heating the second washroom, which would be right here, but that's gonna be a storage room and I don't really need to waste heat heating a storage room. Hello. I should not have worn my Sherpa pants today knowing that the heat was gonna be turned on. Like, I'm gonna turn this thing down. Oh, I just, oh, beauty. Okay, so I just turned it down to 17 and it ticked off. So when it was over there, I turned it down to 14 and it didn't even tick off. So now I turned it down to 17 and it just ticked off. So there you go, problem solved. Thank goodness I could not stand to listen to that thing run for an hour while I sat here sweating. <laughs> so that's good. Although uh, they didn't give me a very good thermostat. What I should do is get like a, a better thermostat off Amazon, maybe like a smart one or a programmable one. This one is sort of ghetto, so I wouldn't mind getting a better thermostat. It's just a couple wires in there, so I could very easily just swap that up on my own. So yeah, there we go. Radiant heat on, and uh, I'm cooking. Cooking, that's for sure. And uh, Paul's going to come by, and we're going to continue sanding the drywall, and maybe we'll get something else done as well. Oh no, there's drywall dust everywhere. We're just working on vacuuming it up right now. And check it out, we filled an entire bag already. I started to run to Home Depot and pick up two more shop back bags. And also while I was there, I grabbed some terry towels. I've got excellent news, everybody. I've got way more done today than I originally anticipated because check it out, the walls have been primed. I did not think that we were gonna start painting, but priming is all good to do right now. So. That's primed up there. The cabinet is primed up and also the stairs are primed up as well, both the outside and the inside. Then when we come up here, you can see some more primed walls. So that's all done. And same with that one there. And check it out, the pony wall has been framed. So that is it right there sitting beside the sink that still has to be installed. But that is gonna go Right there, as I've been mentioning, uh, the plumber is coming in the morning. Once that pipe is moved, we can install the pony wall. We can put the drywall on it, tape and mud it, 
And then we're also going to be laying the subfloor. And that is all happening tomorrow. So we're going to take a 5 8 sheet of drywall, actually two of them, and we're going to subfloor this whole thing right here. And it's going to be tapered, like the edge of this be tapered upward a little bit. And boom, that floor will be reinforced. Those holes will be covered. And you'll be standing 5 eighths of an inch higher up the ground. So you heard about the stuff that's happening tomorrow. There's also something else that happened today that I didn't feature yet. And that's these lights. They were installed, these light fixtures. So that was just like an exposed light bulb before. And now it's that. And check these lights out. They're pretty cool. You can set the tone and the uh, gross old washer mirror. <laughs> that's a pretty cool light fixture though. It'd be nice to have in like your bedroom or something. I got them from Home Depot and they were actually the cheapest light fixtures that I could find of that style. Yeah, so if, you, if you're uh, looking for something like that, well, there you go. Uh, so let's talk a little bit about timeline. We've made some tremendous progress here today, but what is the future looking like? So tomorrow we're gonna be taking care of the stuff on the mezzanine. Tomorrow is Thursday. And then we're actually gonna be taking Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday off. So there's gonna be no construction that's gonna happen over that four day period, but then we're gonna resume on Tuesday. What has to happen? We've gotta install the new washroom. I've got this beautiful sink right here. And we're gonna buy a new toilet as well, get rid of the old ones. That's gonna be great. We also have to cap the pony walls off and also cap the stairs off. And then we have to paint everything. And then we have to lay carpet and lay carpet on the stairs as well. And then it is done. Two other exciting things happened today. Uh, I actually spoke to a mural artist. I mentioned in my last video that I was looking for a mural artist locally and somebody reached out to me and I have a meeting with them tomorrow. So it's another exciting thing that's happening tomorrow. And in addition to that, the plumber is coming tomorrow and uh, my buddy Sting's Bricks came on by and we were having a look at table designs on the SketchUp program. So we're starting to come up with table designs, how much lumber we need, and starting to get a ballpark idea of how the tables are gonna start to fill this room. So yeah, construction resumes next Tuesday. I don't know if we're gonna be able to paint, lay carpet, and do all the final touches that week. I hope so. But it really does come down to the mural artist as well. And so either mural artist or the giant vinyl or just painting like the original plan, like just painting, just patching the walls and painting them to the color that they currently are. Those are the three different options that I have right now for clouds. I'm still thinking about it. I'm excited to talk to, about, or talk to the mural artist tomorrow and see if he's got any good ideas for this area. And then I'm still waiting for the finalized quote for the vinyl and also the large curtain that would cover the back wall. So make sure you stay tuned for some more great stuff. Thank you so much for coming on by. I hope, I hope this is all finished by the end of next week, but it'll probably be the end of the following week because of the clouds and whatnot. But the end is in sight. Everybody have yourselves a fantastic day and farewell.